Good morning guys or good afternoon I don't know what time you're watching this video but we want to take a look at some of the requirements that you need or you must have whenever you go and sit the atlib um, there is an email that was sent to me and then I am just making this short video for you guys to know what you need to have on that day when you sit the atlib right it said says required materials um, First thing it says, it says candidates are asked to bring a pens, pens plural, meaning that you need to have two or three pens. I would suggest that you take two black pen and two blue pen, right? Two B soft pencil, right? The pencils that have two B or the one that says BH2 or two BH, right? So pencils, eraser, sharpener, and a fine point permanent marker right with this fine point permanent marker this is something that is a little bit new that they're asking but the, um, you should know that whenever you sit the atlib you will be you will have a bubble sheet which is your answer sheet where you can um, where you shared your answer and you will shade it with pencil at first but when you finish and you're sure that you're, you will not change your answer and you have to be sure that you will not be changing your answer then you're going to take the the fine point marker black marker and then you're going to shade on top of your answer why because whenever they take your paper it's not going to be um teachers or people who are going to be checking your answer but it's going to be a machine that is going to check your answer so it the shading it needs to be shaded good the circle is it, it's a bubble sheet so you have a circle and you have a letter inside and then you choose the one corresponding to it, the one you think is the correct answer and you shade it completely and then you use the marker to brighten the color the black color right so you need a fine point permanent black marker and then the reason for it is for you to darken the, bub the bubble that you are shading or your answer you are shading, right? Um, two, it says they also need to bring a picture identification, preferably their school identification card or your social security. So you need to take your school identification card or school ID or your social security. I guess for most of us um, from Kaina Online, it is going to be our social security because I'm not so sure if we have an identification card, right? And then for if you're from a school, um, any school, then you need to take your school ID, right? So make sure you have that whenever you go to sit the atlib exam thirdly it says candidates are allowed to use a silent non-programmable calculator without graphical display data banks and dictionary or language translation scientific calculators can be used now note those small ones that you are able to buy at the Chinese store for about twenty thirty dollars those ones are the non-programmable and then just make sure if it has sound to mute it so you don't be disturbing anybody in the exam the programmable calculators are those big calculators that normally um, cost way up to 100 150 dollars right but we were we, we don't have much of those here in Belize so one of those calculators that you can get from the Chinese is going to work fine right so those are some of the things that you need to have remember your pen your pencil your eraser your sharpener and your marker right um, let's quickly take a look at the instructions for your atlib for your atlib, notice that what we have, it says it's going to be 
this is your cover page this is more or less how your your at lib is going to look you have your at lib you have math test and then you have it is one hour and a half and then it's going to be this friday 28th or it's going to be an la 38th right your instructions it says this test consists of 50 multiple choice questions so you have 50 questions and all of them are multiple choice each question is worth one point for a possible mark score maximum score of 50 points so you there are 50 questions and then you have one point allotted for each one third it says shared answers on the sheet on the answer sheet provided using a number two pencil right so this is number two b number or, or i think it's b2 pencil right let me go back okay, here it's a b2 soft pencil so it's going to be one of the b2 soft pencil so you get a pencil you shade your answer on your bubble sheet and then it says if you have to change any answer completely erase the previous answer and then you shade again right so if you have if you did my mistake and you think your answer is different then you just shade your i'm sorry you erase your answer and then you reshade when you finish answering all your questions and it is almost for time up you need to take your marker and you need to shade the circle that corresponds to your answer right final answer shade with marker you need to shade it with your marker so that your answer or the bubble is shaded dark and then this is just to prevent from you getting it wrong if you never shade it that bright right so make sure you shade with your marker um rough work may be done anywhere on the question paper so if you you need to do any rough work you have the question paper and you have your answer or, or, or your bubble sheet within the answer or the question paper you can write as much as you want anywhere within the question paper and then within the bubble sheet you just shade the letter that corresponds to your answer the letter that corresponds to your answer right so that is what they want within the bubble sheet so don't go and shade anything right um then the other one we have that uh, it says note that all diagrams on this question paper are not drawn to scale which means that any diagram that you see there don't guide yourself by using your eyes because you will be wrong or you might be wrong right um which says that um they're not drawn to scale so if if you see that a line is longer than the other one don't say it is longer than the other one you have to prove it you have to work it out you have to show some kind of working so that you know it is the longest side right so or some kind of definition so you know it's the longest side right so make sure that you are you don't guide yourself from your eyes but you work out your answers and then it says um, the use of a silent non-programmable calculator is allowed so you are allowed to use a calculator and then it's the scientific one and then without graphic display so none of the expensive calculator where you can save things and where you can do graphing and things like that right and then the last thing it says it says cell phones are not allowed in the exam room so no need of a cell phone if you take your cell phone you need to turn it off before you enter the compo the campus and then you need to put it in your bag or anywhere where it will not disturb make sure that you turn it off so it does not distract i repeat myself turn off your phone if you take one right so that is what we have in terms of instructions apart from that i also want to mention to you guys that um whenever you do your exam please ensure that you do not leave any question unanswered normally whenever you don't know an answer and i would try to to 
quickly look at the question and then answer but if you can't um, I would I want to say that statistics say that your answers might your, your, it's best to shade B and C that is what statistics say but you know it's just statistics it might it might still be wrong right so try to quickly just browse through the question and then answer it browse through the question and then answer it before you hand it but make sure that all questions have a shaded letter or you have shaded a letter for all your questions to avoid any of those or to or to try to gain as many points right so you might you might be lucky and you get one more point there so so make sure that you have all questions answered right another thing that i want to mention is that on that day you need to be early you need to be at least if i for me, I would tell you half an hour, but if you want, it's 15 minutes. You have to be half an hour or 15 minutes early. Reason is because you will be there. You will need to find your the classroom you're going to be in and to make sure that, that um, your name is there, right? If you did, if you did not pay at lib or if you paid it late, or you did not follow procedures and there's no name for you, then you will not be allowed to sit the exam. So make sure that you have received um, some information telling you that you you have done the proper procedure to to sit the athlete, or else you will go back home because maybe you did not pay your your athlete or or something you did wrong and then they will send you back right so make sure that you are there 15 minutes so that you can clarify that your name is there that that everything is okay and then also use those that time to sharpen your pencils to take out your pen to have your calculator to have your eraser remember that you will not be allowed to borrow or lend anything so make sure you have your personal one right um another thing is that if you are late and you reach I, I i would think that if you reach 15 minutes late the supervisor will not allow you to sit the at lib right so if you are 15 minutes late you will not be allowed to sit the at lib so on that day, if you live live far, make sure you have your alarm and then you wake up early and you take an early bus to reach wherever you need to go to sit your exam. All right. So those are some things that you guys need to know about that lib. Um, um, let's quickly take a look at something else. In this case, I want to, to look at the at this where it says that um some of the topics that are going to be within the atlib one is statistics then we have relation functions and graph we have computation we have number theory we have consumer math we have algebra statistics probability geometry and trigonometry and then we have the last one which is measurement right so those are all the topics that are going to be in your atlib if you need to stop this video and then copy it down you can do so and then if you see what we have here then we have how many questions of each topic statistics sorry sets you have sets you have two questions that will be computation which you have to calculate and then knowledge right just like recall then and then two that you have to think how to get the answer that is going to be three questions within sets relation functions and graph that's two and two so you have four questions 
computation that's going to be three and two that is five questions and then you have number theory that's two and two making it four questions consumer math you have three and two making it five questions where you will have a lot of questions on is in, is going to be in algebra algebra if you notice you have six questions and then plus three more where you have to think a little bit that's going to be a total of nine questions that you have with algebra right with statistics you have three and two making it five probability you have one two and one making it three geometry you have four and three making it seven so geometry and and trigonometry you have seven questions and then measurement you have three and two making it a total of five right so that is what we have and then if I could move this a little bit to the side you can see that what you have is the first part pure math you have it is 30 questions the second part which was statistics and probability you have eight questions and then trigonometry geometry and measurement you have 12 questions making it a total of 50 questions right any questions